Today on Dead Dodge Garage, we're still working on the 451 stroker motor. And I'm getting irritated. Important note, I filmed this video a year ago. I never released it for reasons. We actually have seen a bit more of this engine in my roller cam conversion video. And you can go check that out if you want. I thought there were some useful notes in this one, so I decided to run it anyway. Also, I don't have any other videos today, so you know, there's that. You see, when faced with the proposition of assembling an engine out of almost entirely new parts, the thought that comes to your mind is, everything's nice and easy. It just fits together and it's clean and better than factory. What should come to your mind is, Nothing fits correctly. That surface is supposed to reach that corner. Because it doesn't, the intake doesn't fit right. Here's a look at this area on the 440 I built recently. Note, they don't exactly come together perfectly, but they're really, really close. On this left side head, it's at least in the neighborhood. The right side head is not even in the same sport, really. Uh, that's just not gonna fly. You might be thinking right now that the valley pan would make up that difference, but actually what happens when I bolt the valley pan in is it gets even worse. I'd love to be throwing all this pretty stuff on the top of this engine now for a glory shot, but I have to do something else instead. Wow. Okay, that's not the result I expected. <laughs> it's a block machining problem. Now I feel bad for briefly doubting 440 source. I really wanted this to be a video about finishing putting this engine together. Then I thought it was gonna be a video about yelling at 440 source. Now it's a video about something completely different. Inadequate factory machining at Chrysler in the 1970s. I should have taken it as a good hint of what was going on when the head and the head gasket were in exactly the same place. Note here, all the head bolt holes are centered in the gasket holes. At the factory, Chrysler would have used some sort of drilling fixture to get all these holes in the right place. And clearly what happened is whatever reference marks they were using um, weren't right. And the entire fixture ended up that way. So all these holes are correct in relation to each other, but in relation to the block, they're totally wrong. The place this is most obvious, the fire rings. Look how close the gasket is here and how far it is here. Because we're Mopar hoarders, of course, we have plenty of other big blocks to test out here. Look at that. On this one, the gasket comes perfectly to the corner. Of course, all the bolt holes still centered. The gasket's even kind of farther from the outside of the block there. And again, you can look inside the fire rings and you can see the gaps are much closer to equal. Although I won't say they're perfect. So my entire problem here, shoddy factory machining. Not much I could do about it either. So how are we gonna solve this problem? Before we cover that, I'd like to cover some recent frequently asked questions. Questions like, why are you using a 400 block instead of a 440? Because that is the original block from that car. For decades, the 451 stroker was the stroker big block build. You take the 400 block, which has the biggest bore, and you use the 440 crank, albeit with turned down main bearings. Main journals. Past Jamie meant main journals because they're not the same on high deck and low deck engines. And then you get the biggest stroke in the shortest block with the biggest bore. You get a weight advantage and a power and torque advantage. Nowadays, you can just buy a stroker crank like this one. And you have lots of other options like, well, I don't know, a 512 made out of a 440. But that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is building a really nice, really stout, supremely torquey and streetable 451 stroker. And that's another thing commenters don't seem to get. We're not going for all out horsepower. One comment said, somebody just made 540 horsepower with a factory stroke 400. And by somebody, of course, I mean this guy. So if the stroker doesn't make 500 horsepower, what's the point? Well, it's more than capable of that, but that's not what we're going for. An important part of being successful in a build is stating your goals and then tailoring the combination to meet them. And that's exactly what we've done here. The point of this build is to make usable street torque, tire boiling torque, and excellent power in that 1000 RPM to 5000 RPM range. You know, the RPM range you use on the street. 
how often are you going to be at 6,500 RPM making that big 540 number? In this car, probably never. Every decision you make is a trade-off. Putting a humongous cam in to make that big scary horsepower number trades off low end torque. It makes it so you need a ridiculous stall converter to keep the engine happy. We don't want to do that. So this is what we did. Rooster, also known as Dead Dodge Garage Midwest Edition, hit it on the head when he said, this is a super solid combination that will be safe and streetable. And if the owner ever decides he needs a ton more horsepower, all the parts are there and he just has to change the cam. He'll also have to change the stall and probably change the gears, but that's another matter entirely. So how are we gonna solve this problem? Well, in talking to my machinist, uh, he said, throw the block away and get another one. For obvious reasons, we're not gonna do that. Now on the subject of the machinist, a couple of you might be yelling, why didn't they check that in the background right now? Why would they? That shouldn't be something that happens. We talked through a couple possibilities. The first one that came to my mind was the same thought he had. You could machine the china wall down so the intake sits lower, but I think that turns into a port alignment problem. And if you think about it, whatever you do with that head surface down, the intake's gonna be cockeyed like that. And that's not ideal. So here's our next thought. Composite gasket. Use it as a shim under the valley pan. If you know Big Block Mopar, you know that they all use a valley pan very much like this underneath of the intake to seal the crankcase. You may also know that gaskets like that one are available to either go on top of this plate or sandwich it for better sealing. In my experience, not only are those unnecessary, uh, they can also turn into a vacuum leak if they're not installed correctly. So every Big Block I've ever built got the valley pan and some silicone and that's it. You can see right away that that's not going to fly on this deal. On this side, it does touch, and with the intake in place, it'll sit down flat. A little bit of silicone in that corner, and we'll be just fine. On this side, however, um, not so much. I've never heard of Rocket Automotive products, but that's pretty awesome. Okay, it was awesome, but it's 100 years old and brittle. It's fine by now. I have more. Okay, this particular gasket won't actually work because that's for the max wedge with a big humongous port. And although we don't have a heat crossover, we probably need that to get the valley pan to seal right. So we'll be ordering the other one. But for demonstration purposes, this is what we have in mind. Basically, if the only problem here is that that surface is too far that way, we'll fix it with a gasket as a shim. Now, without bolting it down to crush these gaskets, we can't see exactly where we're gonna end up, but you can see it kind of sort of fits now. As usual, there's a lesson here. And it's the same lesson as every other engine building operation. Check everything. What if I hadn't noticed that and I had just tightened the bolts down? At best, horrible vacuum leak. At worst, uh, probably could have cracked the brand new intake in half. And that would have been a neat trick, but not ideal. We're currently waiting for parts to come in the mail. Notably, cam gear bolt sent. Uh, this was originally, of course, a single bolt factory setup. So in switching to this, we don't have the hardware. We also need a button since we're now using a roller cam we don't have the force of the lifters pushing the cam rearward in the block, so we need to put a button here on the front so it doesn't walk this way into the timing cover. That would be bad. The last part of the equation that's missing here, push rods. Yet another annoying piece of this deal. That's a special checking push rod that you use to figure out what length you need. Unfortunately, it was too long because it's set up to use with regular flat tappets, so I had to grind it down quite a bit to get it to somewhere that was usable. I did assemble the 440 source roller rocker deals. I must say they're really nice. The quality seems to be okay, other than some goofed up threads in these. Here's a look at the one I haven't put together yet. See there, it does have holes on both sides, unlike a factory tube, which only has one set of those. We did order shim kits with them, and I'm definitely gonna have to use those because, well, the locations aren't precise. The instructions specifically say that you're supposed to use a 5 16 push rod with this. And you can see why right away. The checking push rod's 3 eighths and it rubs there off a lift, which is not ideal. Speaking of nothing fitting right, fuel pump block off plate. This is a generic part that fits like everything, but um, they interfere with these Chrysler big blocks right in there. I had to grind that down and I also ground it a little bit on the bottom here so it wouldn't hit that plug. I've kind of been down this road before on the crew cab we did. It leaked from here badly, yet again. Check everything. If you just bolted that on and assumed everything was fine, everything would not be fine. 
Oh yes, another commenter told me to rip these hex plugs out and put in the square head ones instead. No, I've had better luck with these and they look better. So that's pretty much where we're at with the stroker motor. Work on it for 15 minutes, find more parts we need to order, find things are messed up, wait a week and repeat. But we're getting places and I think it'll be a whole engine before long, probably. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. And remember, the easiest way to eat an elephant is call your friends that are good at eating elephants and ask them to help.